Oh my goodness, it's Friday again. You know what that means. Trump week. <laughs> and it's been a full week in many ways. But this has been a different week. We've, we've characterized this as shame at the border. I want to I I change it a little bit, though. How about national disgrace at the border? Okay. What do you think? I get to my vote. International disgrace at the border. Yeah. yeah. Because the whole world's watching. Yeah. Yes. I Cynthia, agree. what do you think? I think it's horrible. I think it's horrific what is happening. And it's all private. This is for profit stuff that's happening down there, too. It's not like our military that are running these camps. This is for profit private people that are running these camps. They don't have blankets. They don't have medicine. They don't have toothbrushes or soap. You've got kids taking care of kids. They don't have diapers that are being changed. And they don't allow anyone in. This is the thing that really gets security, me. Security, security. Not a single senator gets to walk through that door. Even the and Geneva, do walk even the Geneva Convention allows the Red Cross to come in and monitor what's going on. Right. So exactly. They're not even compliant with the Geneva so Convention like, if right. this was a war. Stalag Seventeen. Yeah. Right? Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And there's people that are bringing Red Cross is bringing stuff. My own church, the United Methodist Church, UMCOR, has been there from the beginning for a year now trying to bring things for these kids, and they won't accept them. Well, maybe the president Send them back. didn't know the details. Oh, please, don't give me that. I don't believe it for a minute. He knows all of the details and does not care. <laughs> he watches television all day. He's got to know. He's got to know. <laughs> he knows. So what do you think they think about us now around the world, about the children, about the toothpaste? The United States is obtuse. Yeah, or worse. Or yeah. worse. So and, they, and, and, and that, that shining city on the hill is no longer shining. Right. But right. you know what? Our allies have been our allies for decades. Not um, when this president is no longer around, they'll remember how the United States used to I be. Hope so. And I they'll hope remember, so. and I they'll come so. back to us, and they'll remember what we once stood for. I hope so. I Give think us maybe so. Your tired, huddled masses. <sighs> Longing to breathe. Yearning breathe. to breathe free. I think of that, and I am so unhappy Me that too. we have lost it. Me too. For a time, anyway. Well, now you know the Congress, at least uh, the House, passed a bill um, providing $4.5 billion to support those kids and these, these Stalag 17 installations. Um, but it had controls on it. It said you can only use this money uh, for the kids and those installations. The Senate passed a bill for $4.5 billion without any controls, right. allowing him to use the money for his long-awaited wall and other things along those lines. You know, security, okay? Then Nancy Pelosi said, okay, okay, in order to get this passed, we're going to take our controls out of the House bill. Mm. And I think, it's, I think it's going that way. That's what's going to happen. So there's no way to be sure. In fact, you can be probably sure that the controls won't be there, and he will misuse the money. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about that bill? We cowered out. Yeah. Yeah. She, was, she didn't want to. I don't think she wanted to have a controversy while the children were in such dire straits. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. Right. And that would put it on her. But when you implement a law, you know, it's the devil in the detail. And those controls needed to be in that bill. I yeah. agree. And you know, I mean, it's the narrative of this whole thing is really what upsets me is, you know, when Trump gets on in, in an interview and says, I'm just following what Obama did previously. Oh, you know, come on, really? You're he did right. not. And it was not like this, not in any shape, form. Um, was there child separation? Yes. In, in specific cases where one of the parents was either drug running or there was a, you know, domestic violence situation then in any case, the child could be separated from the parent. But it was not a standard practice to separate those children. That was, you know, that was um, the quotation of Roman 13 from Jeff Sessions as the validation to reboot these he's kids. Made, he's made uh, Obama a kind of scapegoat from the yes. beginning. And the same with but I don't see the media challenging that. Uh, right. I'm with you on that. I'm with you. I don't think the media does challenge it. We challenge it. We, we always challenge it, and that's good for right. us. So what about now the G20, where he made plenty of statements, and, and you've already established, I mean, we've established many times all over that you can't trust what he says. It's just he's, he's into the lie, wraps himself in lies. Uh, so what about G20? Is there, 
Is the same pattern going on in G20? What's happening there? Oh, it's 10 times worse. Are you kidding? When he said, it's none of your business, when that, re when that um, reporter asked him, are you going to you know, say something to Putin about his interference in our elections? And he says, what I say to him is none of your business. And he said it with such sarcasm and attitude. Aside from the sarcasm oh. and attitude, where, where does that play in the First Amendment? Where does it play in the freedom of the press? Right. Where does it play in the interest of the American public being informed? Where does it play? Right. I, and that's not rhetorical. I mean, I really want to know what you think about that. Well, where does it play is to what degree are you underselling this country? in order to gain whatever you're gaining from Russia, either through the 2020 election or some past unknown debt that you're tied up with that no one knows about because we don't know what your tax returns are or the investigation is not complete. Um, who knows what, what his attraction is to Russia and why he favors Russia in so many times in so many ways. Um, and this is just one more example of it's none of your business. Well, it is. And it's the American public business. He's going to meet with the, to meet with the Saudis. And say, wait a minute, freedom of the press, First Amendment, he represents us, we right. pay his salary. He uh, lives in our he, house. He lives in our house. <laughs> uh, he's, 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 he's there for us. He's there representing us. He's there to improve our, our national position in things. But he won't tell us. That's one thing. The other thing is, not only will he not tell us, but he is demonstrating that he doesn't even feel obligated to tell us, ever. Mm. That he can go and talk to these leaders and do conspiratorial things, collusionary things, if you will, and not tell us. Um, he can do it on his own account and not tell us. That's it extraordinary. It's another break from the norm. Right, uh, and it's not new because he did this last year. Remember, no note takers, no, not even the note takers right. that were for Putin. So we don't even know what he said last year. Right. He's so doing it on this his own isn't account. new. It's, as we said a couple of shows ago, he's running a sole proportionship right. government, and we're not involved. <laughs> it's, all, it's all him, and he doesn't know how to do it either. What about the comment about uh, don't meddle? Oh, my goodness sakes. They asked the question. He's sitting right next to Vladimir Putin. They said, are you going to ask you know, Russia about the 2020 election? And he kind of you know, was you know, very lightheartedly. He goes, don't meddle in our 2020 election. Smiles. Um, this, the newspapers all reported yeah. it that way. Yeah, it's they a smile. Smirking. Uh, I've seen smirking. the video. I saw the footage. Smirking. I saw I the, footage, the video footage, and he was smirking and smiling, and it was a lighthearted joke. It was a lighthearted joke. And you're thinking, okay, put this in the context of the other comment to um, George Stephanopoulos about I wouldn't necessarily tell the FBI if I you know, got information from a foreign power or foreign country about, you know, Dirt on my component, on my uh, my opponents in the in the, the election campaign, and you just you know put the pieces of this puzzle together, and you're seeing there is a open yard sign saying, my, you know, we're open for business. Help me in any way you want for me to win the uh, 2020 election. Right. That's what I got out of it. What did you get out of it? Same what, thing. what is he really saying to us? Same thing, and he's going to have breakfast with the Saudis, you know, on Saturday, and he's meeting again with people. Putin today on his own, and yeah, I think it says. It says that he does not give a care about what's really going on in America. Yep. And all he cares about is, is his power and his control. And to see the look on Putin's face when he did that, it wasn't just a sarcasm in, on Trump's face, in his smile. They're both smiling. But that's, that smile of, I think he's been smiling like that since 2016. Yeah. Right? You can't touch me. You can't touch me. Look at this. Look, I, I, everybody's making jokes. It was in, you know, public, on camera, and he's just going, it was the smirk of the well, century. What about, what about the Saudi uh, guy that he was standing next to? Is it Prince Salman, I guess? Yeah. He was standing next to Salman in this group portrait um, and, uh, and really being very friendly with him. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and, of course, the sale of weapons continue because they can't override his veto on that. Uh, extraordinary. The sale of weapons continue. The travesty in Yemen continues. Nobody can do anything about it. Yeah. And nothing's uh, been done about um, Khashoggi, yeah. uh, Khashoggi thing. either, you know, a, an American, you know, reporter. It's also somebody can sell, some companies in this country can sell weapons. That's right. what it's about. Right. You know, our previous presidents have been pretty mum about the behavior of this Donald Trump in his, you know, 800... 75 plus days or whatever the number is um, until recently where President Carter actually did make a comment about this 
about Trump saying, you know, don't meddle in our elections. And, and, and President Carter said the following, there is no doubt the Russians did interfere in the election. And I think the interference, although not yet quantified, if fully investigated, would show that Trump didn't actually win the 2016 election. He lost the election and he was put in office by the Russians. Now that's from a former president of the United States. Although President Carter is 94 years old. Something, but he's really sharp But still. he's a sharp guy. And yeah. as a former president, you rarely see a president comment that overtly about the behavior or actions of a, a current president. It's the president's club, you know, they, don't, when, they don't do it. When you shake it and bake it, he's gonna do exactly that for this election. He's gonna win this election with the help of the Russians, doing the same things, and it's a smirk. And you know, it's like right out there in public. Yeah. Don't do it again, right? In plain view. That's what I've been saying. I think I say it every single week, don't I? Yeah. And he's going to cheat. He cheated before. He's going to cheat again. And if we don't do something specific and intentional about it, then we're going to be stuck with him for another who knows how long. Yeah. Well, what, no, Mueller's going to testify. Is that going to change anything? July 17th. going to change the recipe around impeachment? You know, it could now be a, a bullet point on the agenda of the Democratic yeah. candidates' discussions is election security. And you may finally start to see or get what you're wanting. I hope. <laughs> you know, because I, I think at some point someone's going to say, what good is all this, the, the, the merits of each candidate right? when it's not going to make a difference because he's already rigged the election? Exactly. I've been saying that all along. Right. So you <laughs> might as you well. You have, actually. I know. You have. <laughs> some of us have. <laughs> now, now, of course, of course if, if it gets really bad in Iran, uh, that could be a factor. In, yes, in the impeachment uh, dynamic. Um, and I, I think I mentioned this. My own theory about it is that Trump has pulled the, the, pulled the cork out of the bottle um, on, on cyber terrorism, uh, the cyber war, and it's, it's free right. for all now. Yeah. And they, uh, he, he said he was attacking them. They will undoubtedly attack us. They have the, they have the innate ability, uh, the indigenous ability, if you will, <clears throat> but they can get help from Russia, who'd be only too happy to help them. Um, so we have the prospect of cyber war where grids will come down and, and people will die. Um, do you think that will change the dynamic on impeachment? Well, I think it plays a part because one of the things that keeps them from, just like that Neil Katyal memo in the DOJ that says we can't indict a president because it would interfere with his ability to president. Right. Well, I, I think we need to interfere with well, this Neil guy's would, Neil ability. Would like Congress to ask Mueller, well, if it weren't for that memo, would you have indicted him? Right. Exactly. And, and I'd be sitting on the edge of my chair for that one. And I, I know, believe that Mueller would probably say yes. I agree. I and then we'd have too. a different kettle of fish, wouldn't we? Well, he said in the very beginning that he took that into consideration before he did any of the other stuff that he listed. Right. Was that he knew he couldn't. So, but he also said, you know, but I also can't exonerate him. So that uh, was weasel words, as far as I'm. I think you know, so. He should have come really out. He should have known that Trump would misuse it, and you get barred to misuse it and all that, and the public wouldn't understand or read it. You know, he needs to testify. And he needs to get square with us. Um, I agree. Anyway, I don't think he's done us a big favor, a big a, a favor we expected from him. Okay, we're going to take a break for one minute. We're going to come back. And uh, then we're going to talk about, ooh, all the other things. We're going to talk about the national, the national policy, the spending. We're going to talk about the infrastructure. You know why? Because we connect the dots. That's why. Right. We'll be right back. Connect some more dots. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life 
which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. I mentioned infrastructure. And, and you know, there's so many things like infrastructure where he has said he's going to do something. Right. Nothing. And then doesn't. Even McConnell, nothing. Nothing. Not, not a penny, nothing. Now, the reason I'm provoked about this is that I started watching, yet again, uh, Designated Survivor on cable, uh, on Netflix. Designated Survivor is in season three, and Designated Survivor, I've been waiting for cable to do a movie about some of the issues that come up right now, the issues that we talk about. And right now, the, the, the episode I'm watching is all about infrastructure. And it's all about the president's you know, need to get in there and develop, you know, rebuild infrastructure. And it reminded me of, of, of these connect the dots kind of discussions that we need to have. What happened? You know, it's that old thing about what happened to this? What happened to that? All this stuff. You know, I mean, even gun control. What happened? What happened? Health care. What really happened? Um, so um, uh, I think it's just worth mentioning that nothing's yeah. happened. Nothing. What the phrase comes to mind when you talk about all these things that aren't happening uh, is what was Rome doing when Rome was burning? Right. Nothing. 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 Okay, so. Yeah. There you go. I like but, that. But I think, you know, we have other, other fish to fry here, but I just want to mention that uh, it was very interesting last night and the night before about the debates. Uh, how do you come away from the, these debates, Cynthia? What do you think? I thought Warren stayed really strong in the first one. Um, I didn't, nobody else really stood out to me. Tulsi Gabbard did a fairly good job, but I don't really trust anything she says because I know her past. Um, and I wish she'd talk about that a little bit more instead of, I'm a soldier. She was in, I believe, an office position. So <laughs> it's kind of weird for her to come across as a soldier. So that part, I mean, she comes across really good, but she just has this sort of weird blank look on her face all the time. Um, I thought it was good the way uh, Beto and, and Juan kind of went back and forth about you know, speaking in Spanish, too. And I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, in the second... But I still thought Warren was was the best, even though she just sort of sat back. She didn't come out really strong. She's a but policy she just, wonk. She's just, yeah, her policies win. She's got a plan for that. And that's her, you know, her catchphrase. And she does have a plan for just about everything. And they're good plans. So I really like Warren. She's getting better and better in my mind. Um, in the second one, I thought that, well, I love the line that, that Harris said when she says, hey, America doesn't want to see a food fight when everybody goes, ah, 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 going back and forth. Just, hey, America doesn't want to see a food fight. They want to see how we're going to put food on their yeah, table. Yeah, and then she promptly got into a food fight. Yeah, exactly. Stolen food at Biden, which I thought was kind That's of... That's a politician. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I mean, she was, she was really good, but the fact yeah. is she was attacking other, other Democrats right. and making, I, and making a like mess it. among the Democratic Party. Yeah, yeah, I didn't like it. Swalwell was my favorite out of the whole night. Yeah. Um, I would like to have seen Biden come back a little stronger when she went after him. But, um, but I think Swalwell was the guy. Yeah. And it was his comment about the torch. And how he was in grammar school, no, in middle school, and a senator came and talked to them about how they need to pass the torch to the next generation, and that senator was Joe Biden. And I thought that was a really powerful, powerful important statement. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what do you think of Harris, uh, Harris and, and Biden? Well, I think, you know, she did what she tried to do is draw him out, um, show the world that, yeah, I could, if I could do it to Joe Biden, I could do it to Donald Trump. Right. And I think that was her main um, objective. Um, generally about the debates, I was reminded of what Ronald Reagan, his first commandment was, and that is, thou shalt not throw any other Republican under the bus. Um, but by nature, all these debates is all about throwing your fellow de Democrats under the bus in order for you to kind of claw your way up to the top. But remember, when you get into these general um, elections, excuse me, the, the, you know, the primaries and these debates, Whoever does emerge as the, the, the final candidate, um, are they so bloodied and bruised that when it comes to the general election against Trump, that they're, you know, they're, they're tattered and torn? And that's why Reagan said that, you know, because right. they, they're tearing each other up. Uh, nobody's torn up Harris yet, but that'll come. They have to stop it that'll, to some degree. Some, yeah. And I, you know, uh, I, I understand. And I take your point that um, Harris was showing us that she is winnable. 
uh, she can fight with Trump. And in fact, you know, in my mind, my, 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 my perception of her, what was going on is I saw her on the stage with Trump. I saw her wiping up the stage with Trump. She could do that uh, beyond any of the others. She would nose to nose with him and beat him to a frazzle. I think it's clear. And, and that is a big piece. Even though she may not have been fair to Biden, yeah. uh, even though she may not have the policies that Elizabeth Warren has, um, she's, she's got guts. You know, I, think, well, I think Elizabeth Warren does, too. Yeah. So I think she could fight with Trump just as well and has a little more political um, experience in, under her belt, more so than, than Kamala Harris So maybe Harris those does. two women. How about that? Well, That'd be good. What, I could handle that. What didn't come <laughs> up was age. And I, you know, let's hypothetically say Joe Biden because he can take on Trump like no one else can. Okay, I'm not saying that's the case, but you cannot help equate Joe Biden to uh, John McCain and the age factor, the health factor. And what was the primary key component of John McCain's loss? The selection of his vice president because the vice president was one heartbeat away from the president of the United States. She killed him. Mm -hmm. So this equation will be no different with Joe Biden. That right. will run through the back of people's minds. Who's his VP pick if he's the nominee? I'm just saying you could we have a very rich, very rich he's pool a of candidates. choice if he's the nominee. Yeah, and if he'd be smart to pick a very strong vice president pick because uh, John McCain didn't. Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I mean, it's interesting how some names are elevated and other ones are flat. You know, we, just, we haven't changed our view of them and other ones have declined. Um, and this is going to happen more and more. Uh, it's really an interesting experience, although I'm sad because as, uh, they didn't follow the Reagan formula. Well, I don't know. The first day did. The first night did. Uh, that more was one of my second. notes was that the, there was this wonderful feeling of camaraderie in the whole panel yeah, on that and, first and the one, night. The one issue the is second, how do we get rid of Trump? Right. The second night was more of a free-for-all. But was. that first night, was there was a real, agree. a real sense of camaraderie between everyone. You can differ on policy, not personality. Right. Right. Yeah, Fair enough. exactly. Now, what about, what about Trump and the rape case? Can we talk about that for a minute? Yes, please. Yeah. Yes, but you have some thoughts about that? Oh, I have a couple. Yeah, actually, I have a lot. This is well, number hold it, hold it to a few minutes, please. <laughs> I could go on for days, but that's okay. I'm saving that for my show later on today. <laughs> Everyone, tune in to Finding Respect in the Chaos. We'll be talking about it some more. Um, but at any rate, it, he says, she's not my type. Now, I want you to look at her next to the pictures of all of the people that have claimed that he assaulted them. And they all look the same, and they all look just like his wives. So you're going to... And he said to each one of them, oh, she's not my type. So what's... What's the, what's the opposite flip side of that statement? Well, she is my type, and I'd be happy to rape her. Yeah, exactly. Thank I'm you. I'm sorry, but yeah. the, <laughs> not my type is a really well, bad think, response to this the worst, allegation. The worst the suggesting response. Is, uh, she's not my type, and therefore I would not have raped her. So that's ridiculous. I yeah. would not have raped her. Well, you said he didn't know her, too. My, yeah, but I mean, nobody believes that. Right, because there's Everybody a picture of them her. together. I know they got confirmation from two other women who were right? consulted at the time. Um, you know, the problem is rape is a felony. Yeah. It's punishable by, you know, decades in jail or worse. Right. Uh, and yet he gets a pass a, on it. It's a moral, <laughs> moral sin. She <laughs> still a has felony, the dress. I, I hope the She's, women of this country unite against him on this. I hope yeah. she still has the dress and it's able to find some kind of DNA on it. and Because she does have the dress. Um, and I hope, and she's turned it in. So if they can find some DNA on that, she doesn't have to bring the rape case. The state can bring the rape case. Well, yeah, but, you know, they'd have, <laughs> this, this goes to a whole new area of Monica discussion. Monica Lewinsky, that's right. what I'm reminded of. Exactly. Well, let's assume she finds the dress. I mean, she has the she dress. She has the dress. Let's assume that the modern science can pull some DNA off it. I know, wouldn't that be well, Let's assume it's a, a suspicious DNA, and, and we believe it's his DNA. But we have to get a swap from him. Where are we going to get that from? Because right. he's not going to cooperate. Have we, Are we going to do have follow you, him around and grab his cup when he's done? Have you yet? He doesn't cooperate with the Think about process. that part. Thank you. Catch me if you can. Yeah. So it's going to be hard to make that case without yeah, his DNA. Well. I mean, what the travesty is, here's yet another woman coming out and, say, and making this allegation, and it's yet a peep within the, the news cycle, and it's a peep within the ranks of the American public. Yeah, that's is this the horrific? It's me. You That's know, because the, it's the new normal. Well, 
the deplorable new normal. The yeah. deplorable normal. Yeah. And you know, I, I guess I, I, I maybe I'm just getting too old. I'm just I'm just shocked that this is a, a blip in the news cycle. And yet again, it's this aspect of Donald Trump isn't really even being talked about again well, at all. A little bit, but not enough. Well, he, he, he has them hypnotized somehow. Yeah. He has the press hypnotized. And I, I you know, very interesting. He goes, he goes, yes, he goes to Japan. He goes to the G20. He's not in the news very much. The press is all running to the other side of the boat all week with the debates. Yeah. It's very interesting. And he's, he's quiet. I don't think he's quiet because he wants to be quiet. I think he'd be quiet because, you know, they ignored him. Right. And that's what they need to do. They I need agree. to develop their own agenda. Yes. They need to connect the dots in their own way, not let him do it. Well, the distraction, the shiny object, they've been following that around for the last three years. And, you know, look at that's gotten us. Yeah. We had one more point. What, what does that say? What Supreme Court. Say? Supreme Court. <laughs> You can read my handwriting. No, I cannot. I just know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not on this list. I'm just going to put it on the list. <laughs> Let's talk about the Supreme Court this yeah. week. That was special. Go ahead. Well, the Supreme Court came down in two very important cases, and one is uh, kind of a green light for the Republicans to gerrymander mm -hmm. and, and, and basically rearrange the board of uh, each county within each state on, um, you know, who's going to be part of that precinct. And what a horrible decision that is. However, now on the other one is the 2020 census question, whereas, you know, you're trying to load a question and that's going to exclude, you know, uh, millions of would-be census um, participants. And they didn't outlaw it. They just said, your motivation for, you know, allowing this to come to play is weak. So they basically just kicked that down the can until later. But there is a finite deadline of when you can actually print these censuses. It's happening now. Yeah. It's already happening, so yeah. this most likely, this question most likely will not get on the census. It's interesting how they, how they you know, did that fuzzy kind of uh, uh, opinion on it. Because you, you would have thought that maybe the president could do this kind of thing. All he'd have to do is demonstrate that it was a sincere motivation in the question. But in practical terms, they wiped them out on it. Yeah. And you wonder if if Tom Hufflinger or Huffler, remember, he was the Republican operative that when he, he died and on his computer was a whole map and roadmap on how this this question will get on the 2020 census and, and game it, game it towards the Republicans. So that came to light. Now, that wasn't introduced to the Supreme Court, but it was, you know, introduced elsewhere. And you've got to wonder if somehow that that permeated its way uh, before a decision was made. It's not supposed to, but you have to wonder. Well, the Republicans are bent on, you know, suppression of votes um, and on, you know, scaring people away from the polls. And uh, even though, it, from a practical point of view, they're not going to have the benefit of this, this immigration question on the, on the census. I think it's too late for them. And the right. census is only every 10 years, you right. know. So as far as 2020 is concerned, it's too late. Yeah. So... They'll find, they can find, and I guarantee they will find other ways to suppress Gerry, votes. Yeah. Gerrymandering. And gerrymandering being one of them, just one, uh, and scare people away. Closing polling stations, so, making so them too far away. It was away. a pyrrhic victory at best on the, on the census question. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't think it means that much because there's so many other things Republicans can and will do, and that's the new norm for them. That's you win elections by cheating. That's how you win elections. And so, you know, the whole thing about apportionment has been a Republican stable for 20 years at least. Uh, and, and, you know, they, they want staple. And they want, they want to, get, to do that again. And they, that, they got a pass on it. And the Supreme Court didn't restrain them in any way. And you can do really draconian things with reapportionment. And we're going to be faced right. with that in this coming election. What to do, what to do. This is, this is an example of what happens when you move the Supreme Court over, when you, you pack the court with, uh, with conservatives and right wing. Um, I think I at think the end of the day, that day, they announced both of these decisions. It was not a good day no. for, for the, the liberals, progressives, uh, the, the Democrats, and, and the country. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, final comments. Looking forward to next week. What do you got? Looking forward to next week. Oh gosh, let's see. Looking we'll see what Iran. Wrong way to introduce yeah. That. What do you expect for next <laughs> um, week? I think Iran is going to be a big thing. It's going to be big in the news. Um, I think we're still going to be hearing a lot about the the debate coming up. People are going to be explaining themselves. Uh, you know, trying to 
uh, say a little bit more about how they feel about things and what they had said in that 30 seconds on the debate stage. Um, and then I think we're going to be really dealing with what's happening at the border. I'm hoping anyway, because now we've got people like UMCOR and Red Cross and people really starting to clamor. And hopefully, in my heart of hearts, I'm hoping that America will start to just take a stand against this, to stand up and say no more. Because it is the silent people that are just as complicit as the guards standing at the door, in my mind. For me, every week is expect the unexpected. Something that's not on our list that will soon be on our list. So am I looking forward to it? No, because it usually is bad news. But secondly, I think there will be some, um, some developments. I think there's back-channel communications going on right now uh, with Iran. Iran can't afford a war. We can't afford a war. They can't hold up with these sanctions much longer. And I think there is some back-channel communications. If it hasn't happened, it's going to happen. It's a reality show, isn't it? All these is. issues and all these troubles, they keep on coming back like bad wine. They never actually go away. They never get resolved. They're with us like the pox. Uh, and They're wait, there's a new one coming back. I mean, I say coming back. It's the same sort of thing. It's, it's the fiscal management. It's the cap. The, what do you call it? The, um, you know, the, the, the deficit, the budget. The deficit. Uh, Spending, the, the, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the inability of the federal government to pay bills. Right. Um, right. And uh, that's coming back in September, I tell you now. And there's no solution for it. I'm not sure that Congress is any better off. And I'm sure he'll take the same position and try to wangle something out of it, oh, use sure. it as a negotiating tool. So, and that's coming back in September. Yeah. So what is that, 60 days? Yeah. We'll see. Use a bad wine analogy. Remember, when all bad wine is consumed, there's nothing left but a hangover and a headache. <laughs> Okay, but we here don't do food fights. No, we don't. Keep that in mind. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate it. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Jay. Aloha. 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 See you next week. <laughs>